Hey guys, I've got to ask you a question. Have you got everything covered in your business so that you don't really need to learn any more about anything? Um, if you're starting out or you're, you've been in the business for a while, or even if you've been in the business for ages, ask yourself this question. Have you figured out how to perfect all the marketing strategies to get the new clients? Have you got all your fee structure out so you make exactly the amount of, of revenue that you want every year? And have you perfected the client experience so you keep getting more of the same clients? Uh, have you got all that covered? You don't need to learn anything else about how to master that. I would say the answer to that is no. Um, and this is what I'm going to talk about in this episode, the value of investing in your ongoing learning so that you can up your business uh, in 2024 and really get yourself invigorated. You'll only get that uh, feeling by investing in ongoing learning. Believe me, I know it because I've just been to one of the most fantastic interior design business conferences in the world. I want to have a chat about it. Let's discuss. Hey guys, it's Adam of So You Want to Be an Interior Designer, the podcast. Thank you for joining me for episode eight. We're very quickly nearing to the end of the year. If you're listening to me on Apple Podcasts, that's fabulous. Please leave a review. Uh, I would really appreciate it and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell, like, leave me a comment. It really helps with that algorithm, I believe. So uh, if you're, you're listening on podcast or watching on YouTube, I'm just so <laughs> chuffed down the ear. So thank you for joining me again this week. I've got a really uh, interesting episode that I want to talk to you about. But before I do that, uh, I want to ask you if you've taken my quiz. So... Um, if you're just starting out, if you're floundering, uh, or if you've been around for a while and things aren't kind of working as well as they could be, you need a little advice, take my quiz. It's so you want to be an interior designer.tv forward slash quiz. Go to the link below and it takes about two minutes. It's not very long and you'll get some great feedback that will help you along with your journey. So I encourage you to do that. Um, this week, gosh, I, uh, I'm so happy to talk about an experience I've had in the last couple of weeks. I, um, I'm, I'm basing the episode of this podcast on, uh, you know, investing in your future and investing in your business. And one way to do that is to uh, really specify what design business conferences that you can seek out and attend so that you're meeting with people that can really help you to elevate the areas of your business that are kind of coasting along or have become um, stagnant. And that can happen for all of us. So I've had an amazing uh, experience in the last week and a half. I've been over to Luann Live in Orlando, Florida, and I spent three great days uh, learning from some of the very best people in the industry. And I got to uh, meet and finally meet in person Luann Nagera herself. So if you're wondering who, who Luann Nagera is, uh, I'll have to have her on the podcast uh, I'm going to be introducing interviews in the next season, which happens in the new year. But Luann Nagera is, uh, she's been labelled as Mother Connection. So Luann is super kind of famous in the design industry for just her, her podcast. The podcast is called A Well-Designed Business. And Luann launched the business podcast, which is all about interior design and from hearing and learning from interior design experts in the field um it's i don't know how many episodes there are at this point but it's been going for about six years and i believe oh my gosh you know i believe she's had something like eight million downloads of this podcast it's so good um so really over the years she started to to she started to put this event together called luann live where you know it's either been two or three days had a little bit of a stall there during the pandemic where I think they did an online version in 2021 and I think the first one was in 2019. So when I heard that there was going to be a three-day live uh, conference, I decided I was going to take get my uh, butt over from little old Sydney here and fly on a plane all the way over there to uh, join everybody there. Now, I did that for a reason. Luann said in a documentary recently, she said, you know, relationships are, are started and they're sort of fostered on social media, but they really are set in concrete when, you know, you meet in person and you, you kind of cement that relationship. So with that thought in mind, I went over there and that's exactly, that was exactly my intention in doing that. 
I wanted to move out of the bubble I was in here in Australia and go and meet and relate with people that were really, you know, top of their game in so many different areas. So what I want to do today is give you the three big sort of takeaways from this event, Luan Live. This is really a review of Luan Live, but it's also tying in with the learning that and an awareness that I had for myself on the importance of taking the plunge. There is an investment here. I'm not, not denying that. Uh, the Australian dollar to US dollar, they probably don't know it over there, but it's, you know, something like 55 cents to the dollar or 60. So my investment was quite high, but uh, I can tell you that I got a lot out of it. So I'm going to give you my very first uh, learning uh, and, and I really want to s- sort of explain the reasons for that with you today on the podcast. The very first thing that you will get out of investing in, I think, any sort of conference where you've got people that uh, you know have been around and are doing fabulously in their businesses is that you'll get incredible ideas that you cannot think of yourself. How to think about it, I was just thinking, how many times have we, have you, have me, we've had problems. I'll take this out of the design aspect for a moment, but we've had some sort of real hiccup in our lives and our own little minds can't get the solution out fast enough in terms of how we're going to deal with it. Uh, how many times has just that right person that isn't you come in at the right moment and had a really clear direction for you and advice they could give you based on hearing your predicament and um, the trouble that you may have been in at the time and they've given you kind of sage words that you know are going to help you to find yourself out of that that trouble spot you're in at the moment. So that's a small version but that's kind of like uh, what would happen if we never Uh, sort of stepped out of our own minds and into our own way of thinking about anything from personal problems, relationships to bit of the interior design business. So that's definitely uh, the first point here is that uh, you do get incredible ideas when you actually take yourself out of the equation and go and hear from people that are doing different things. So I've got so much to talk about here. I've got a list of here, so forgive me if I keep referring to the list. But um, the very first white person that I want to talk about is a woman called Stacey Brown Randall. She's written a book on referrals and um, has an online support program called Growth by Referrals. Now, this book has been out for a few years. I, I think it's called Generating Business for Referrals Without Asking, a, stim- a simple five-step plan to referral explosion. Wow, wouldn't we all want a referral explosion or referrals explosions? But Stacey's whole program and the book that she wrote a few years ago is all about a strategy for getting referrals. And that really is, uh, to us designers, getting new customers. And she's got a whole lot of uh, strategies there that are in her program. And I was able to learn about a few of them. Obviously, I didn't uh, get the lowdown about every single piece of every part of the puzzle of these fabulous um, coaches and, and design aficionados in the conference, but I at least got enough that I could take away and then delve into deeper if I wanted to. And I definitely had that experience with with Stacey Brown Randall. In fact, I wanted to come on the show. But a couple of things that uh, just stood out for me, um, uncovering the crucial difference between the client experience and the referral experience. So I only really know about the client experience for the most part. What I do in my design jobs is I'll, I'll gift the client on a regular basis. There'll be a, st- a very strict beginning and end and I'll always have the client follow a turnkey approach where there really is they're out of the problems and they're into the the beauty and what seems to them to be almost perfection when they come back after they've been out of the picture and having their home designed so that is the client experience and I invest a lot into that and I've got my own strategies and how I make that a lovely experience for my client but how different to think of the referral experience how are you going to speak to uh, the client that maybe becomes your referrer. Um, how are you going to navigate that sort of conversation between them and a potential conversation with somebody that could be just the right fit for you? So what Stacey did is she really just gave some nuggets on how you do this without asking, can you give me a referral to Jan, your friend, who I really would like as an next client please? So it's all about um, fostering relationships and coming in by caring in for the, caring genuinely for that referral uh, with with very little to do with sales, uh, I think, for some time. Um, a few other things here. How to reward the right behaviour for your referral sources. So you, you're kind of rewarding them in very genuine ways for actually taking the time to, to follow up and to support you. Developing your own natural effortless touch point language that eliminates anything that sounds desperate or pushy. 
So I just got some nuggets there. I have heard some of Stacey's uh, podcast. She has a podcast as well, some podcast episodes. And there is kind of this, <coughs> pardon me, five-step strategy. Um, and I'm really invested in learning more about it. I always want to improve any current systems I've got. And if something is not quite uh, working as well as it could, or I could see could be tweaked, or there could be a strategy that I take on to improve my results, I, you better believe I'm going to seek out that person and get more coaching or uh, join a program if it's focused on, say, referrals is such a big thing. So uh, that was one lady that was awesome. Um, flat fee room designs was a big topic of conversation, you know, rather than my current process, which it, it involves two fees, a design, um, a design creation fee, which I do a flat fee on, and then design implementation fee when I order all the product and work with the trades and then I deliver the project. Um, in a turnkey fashion. So there's normally two fees there. At the moment, I charge the design fee, which I calculate based on the, the amount of work I've got to do. And then I'll charge them another fee, which is 25%. So if they're spending 100 grand with me and I'm managing that 100 grand worth of uh, trades and services, then I'll ask for another 25,000. So still to the client, that process there could potentially uh, be made easier if I moved all that and calculated what it would look like Per room to have one flat fee, for example. So they know if it's $8,000 a room that I'm going to charge to manage that and design it, there'll be $4,000 up front and $4,000 uh, before we uh, kick off into the implementation stage. I'm not saying I'm doing this at the moment, but I learned a lot more about that. One of the benefits of potentially going that way, I think this is a really good one too if you're working and you don't want to have to calculate hours. Um, you know, you do need to calculate hours to get an idea of how things how long things take you in the beginning. Uh, but once you've worked that out and you've done a couple of projects, it, it, you can kind of slot into this. You could really slot into a flat fee structure, especially if you want to work out how much you want to earn at the end of the year and what a project should look like to you so that you're profitable. But um, this flat fee structure, in a way, if the client knows what they're paying up front, if it's $8,000 for one room and they want three, three eights are 24,000, then they know they are spending $24,000 on you designing and managing the whole thing that doesn't include all the furnishings but you get where i'm going mentally people can adjust to one fee even if in the beginning it seems like it's a large flat fee that they have to pay but then again clients still forget that they have to pay me the 25 percent after they've paid that initial design fee we we get it sorted but i'm saying that's food for thought if i really worked out the difference between my current pricing and then looked at a decent flat fee per room, could that be something that I implement in 2024? I'm just thinking about that, but I haven't really thought about that until in that much detail until I, I went to the seminar last week. So that was another thing I learned. The other thing I learned was the realities around creating a product line or releasing a coffee table book. I thought for years, wouldn't it be amazing to have enough jobs and do this beautiful coffee table book with all of your great work that you could showcase and have out there in the world? Um, now, I used to think, gee, and I bet they make great money. You know, these coffee table books are about, you know, it could be 60 to 80 bucks a book. Um, and if they sell a few of them, like, there's probably some great revenue in there. But what I learned is it's not all about the revenue, actually. Creating a product line for somebody, whether it's lamps or a furniture piece, that it's your own piece that you work on with a manufacturer and they promote under your name and you get a commission on. The, the income on that's not, not uh, very high at all. It's not high on those books and it's not high on products. So it's not so much about the amount of money you'll make on product, uh, creating a product line. It's about what you, your voice being out there and you becoming that trusted advisor and that uh, prestigious name in the industry. Now, where can that take you? It can take you to speaking engagements. It could even take you to television. So there's a whole other sort of backstory behind why people do product lines uh, or furniture lines or even release books. It's the, just the, the fact that uh, it's creating this authority type uh, persona to, to you, the person who's, who's gone after that product line or has, um, you know, gone out and sourced um, someone to, to help them uh, create and distribute a book. So really interesting stuff there. So I couldn't possibly know any of this unless I learned it from going to an event like Luan Live. Second thing is you get inspired to 200%. 200%. The success of your business you know you get really invigorated i mean i've got to admit i'm the first person to just run 
uh, with whatever I'm doing. <coughs> if I'm working and I'm doing a project, uh, I'm, I'm following through the same rinse and repeat process, uh, you know, and, and I'm pretty much happy with the way that's going. But I'm super invigorated in taking some different angles and new approaches to how I work on my business and, and even how I get new clients. I'm looking, um, looking at some of the things I've got here. Um, oh, the one big learning was just in a, about editorial. So we all want to get our projects published, or most people do, I think, at some point. If you've done a really beautiful job for a client, you've got it published, then you want to get it out there and get it, get it, get it in a magazine. I mean, it's an ego thing, but it also, you know, historically, it's also created that impression that uh, you're a published um, designer in in a magazine. Now, if if I'm at the caliber of the content that's in most of those magazines, then obviously my design work is sound and it's attractive to to the market out there to want to promote and, and be in the supermarket if it's one of the local magazines or uh, in news agencies or bookstores if it's on another level. So now I've di I've got to say, and this is with, uh, I'm not being, um, uh, peeing in my own pocket here or, or but, you know, big noting myself, but probably about 80% of my projects are, for the last 13 years have been published in magazines. And um, after the first couple of times, the glow of that does kind of die off and you kind of do it because you want to, you still want to get it out there. But a lot of the time, you know, what happens is the book comes out, <coughs> I'll show it to mum and a friend, and we go, oh, isn't that lovely? And then the damn thing's on the coffee table or it's in the cupboard and um, it's forgotten about in the next five minutes. But I learned from uh, some information from a very smart young lady called Rachel Bosnick Johansson. Now, Rachel's uh, approach is about really honing in on prestige clients, which if you guys know me well enough, I'm not prestige, prestige, prestige. I'd rather work for the funky uh, dude in Newtown who uh, has tattoos and loves to paint the walls pink um, and can at least invest in the, uh, you know, it is still a luxury service design, but they want to invest in making their home really funky and cool. It doesn't necessarily mean that, mean that I need Fendi sofas everywhere um, and to stand around in plaid. It just means that uh, my, my focus is on a different kind of customer. But anyway, to get back to the point, this Rachel Bosnick, Johansson does have a whole program that she's established about, around aiming for the right client as well as the right publication um, angle when you're promoting one of your jobs. So she had this whole story of a designer there that had really created kind of this authoritarian figure in, in the way that she had taken segments of her design work and pitched part of it to different publications. Now, one of the publications that this woman I can't remember her name, we'll call her Jane. One of the, the publications Jane pitched to instead of the regular ones, which is what I would normally be doing, is like one of the prestigious Sunday um, lifestyle magazines where they ask for input on, you know, how how how, how um, the design impact impacts people in the home mentally and how they feel physically. Now, I had an experience recently from a client, this is true, where she said, Adam, She's a psych. The the wife is a child psychologist, and there's two uh, boys living with them. Uh, you know that are the the teenage boys, and and um, you know the the what she did was she made the time. This client of mine just recently to tell me that the way that I'd laid out the stripes in the paintwork and the colours I'd used, which is a lot of muted blues and very soft sort of stone colours, she said that the organisation of the stripes and the way I'd modified the art and organized it out within very organized spaces for these boys who were living kind of in a bit of disarray just in their rooms. I mean, what teenage boy doesn't? But she said the way that I'd organized and recurated their personal items and the color I'd use had had a positive impact on their well-being whilst they're at home. She could pick up on that and she knew that it was due to um, some of the colors and the way that I'd organized these geometric stripes. I mean, I'm not saying <laughs> that's rocket science what I've done, but it is an angle I can take to a magazine. I could go to Sunday Life magazine, uh, which is, I don't, I don't know if it's called that, but it's in one of the, the, the newspapers. It comes out as a lifestyle supplement magazine. I could go to them and say, this is the impact of using blue. This is the impact of using geometric stripes. Uh, this is the feedback from clients. And I could get information from other resources to quantify that with, with, with what it means um, to, 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 you know, people living in spaces that are painted blue, for example, what it does to their, 
their their personality or to their to, to the way they feel. I could go and get more information on that and pitch that and pitch my um, feedback and perspective on the way I use colour to say a publication that wants to hear about the medical benefits of colour or something like that. So I haven't worked all this out, and don't don't. <laughs> Don't uh, diss me if it sounds a bit patchy, that story at the moment. But you get where I'm going and you get that there is a whole sort of strategy around how you pitch. Pitching to a magazine is one thing, but how about pitching as uh, an industry es expert in another? Could I have a different outcome in terms of the clients that might uh, give me a call and approach me about doing their home? Is it a different market that I haven't quite tapped into? It probably is, absolutely, I'd say. So I'm really happy that I learned that. Uh, as, as another thing. So there's plenty of things that I can do to 200% up my business in 2024. That was one of them. So number three, the last one, you'll make new friends from all over the world. And this is so important. Um, do you know what? Uh, there was a real impact on me being the only Aussie to go to Luann's conference in Orlando. And um, I noticed on Instagram last week, she had people from Europe sort of saying, thanks for the update on the conference. It's a shame we aren't able to to make the event. And then she said, oh, come on guys, there's a, a, something called an aeroplane. You just get on it and come over. Um, Europe, Europe is not as far as, as Sydney is from Orlando, for example. So she was kind of saying, you know, that can be an excuse. Um, I do believe that my, um, I've made so many new friends. I do believe that I have um, shown Luann that I'm very invested in what she has to offer. Um, and, you know, I've got an opportunity to, for, to be interviewed by her in February. I was interviewed a few years ago, but, um, you know, a few years ago was the start of the podcast and, and I realised the opportunity I've got, um, you know, by Luann offering me a, another place uh, with the audience she has. It's a very big thing. So, um, and I also think it's a big thing to give back and say, I think what you do is amazing, which I truly do. And um, I, I do think it's worth investing in, in taking a plane and travelling across the other side of the world to learn this stuff. So I um, not only I think if I, I got a, a better relationship with Luann because I, I've, I've made myself available, I've turned those Instagram or, uh, you know, relationship discussions into hopefully a more cemented one by rocking up in real life and saying, here I am. Um, I'll invest in you, Luann. I believe what you do offers great value. And it really does. Uh, her program is awesome. So, um, and how many other people have I met? I've met designers from all over America. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was to meet people overseas and start to um, work on relationships with people over in the States, uh, just because I want to do that. There's so many designers that I've spoken to over the years in Facebook groups and uh, Facebook lives. And uh, it's great. You know, I met some people that I've been talking to online for the last seven years. I met them in the flesh. Um, I've met coaches that I've used. Uh, I met Nancy Ganzakorfa, uh, who's a coach I used a while ago, uh, as well as I met as Claire Jefford, Sandra Fink. Um, gosh, all these really great people, Sheryl Luckett, uh, amazing people. Um, so you're going to meet new friends and I'm just going to leave it there. And that's really important. It was really important to me that I I, um, I just stretched out a bit in the world and, and looked to, to, to relate with people that in a totally different environment so that I can return and have friends that I can connect with when I'm there next time. So action steps for you, if you've gotten through this, is um, have a think about what you're going to do in 2024. Have a think about where things are not um, not quite uh, chugging along the way they should. Are you getting lots of, lots of referrals? Are you getting referrals at all? I do get them, but I could probably amp up the... Uh, at the rate at which I get them and be a lot more strategic about them. So, of course, I'm going to be um, speaking to Stacey Brown Randall more about that. Um, the angle to do with the publishing, oh, and being being sort of an industry expert and taking that angle, I'm absolutely going to do that. In fact, I'm going to be doing it ASAP with a particular project, um, the one that I spoke about uh, that from, the, from the client that uh, dealt in child psychology and gave me the great feedback. I need that testimonial from them as well. It's pretty awesome. So I'm for you, take out a pad and paper and just start to jot out where you need some help. Go and have a look at Luann's, Luann, Luann, L-U-A-N-N, Nagera, N-I-G-E-R-A. Go to the Luann University. There's so many different small courses. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of stuff on there. Um, and, and that's something I'm going to be doing as well um, because I think that constant investment 
is definitely needed. Um, so yeah, there you go. That was my Luan Live. I do feel that you should consider about how you're going to invest in your ongoing growth in 2024. Last thing I'm going to do is say, if you haven't taken the quiz and you want to get some feedback from me, if you're flailing, if you're just starting out, if you need to know where your strengths and opportunities lie, go and take the quiz. Say you want to be an interior designer, .tv forward slash quiz. It goes with what I'm saying. If you've got to find something from the quiz, some feedback, and you find that your marketing's not that fabulous, have a think about where you could get some coaching and feedback or do a short course, uh, say, from, from Luann's L L University on that. Um, or connect with me if you want to have a further conversation about it. Maybe I can help you. So um, so you want to be an interior designer.tv forward slash quiz. Go and take the quiz. It's only about two minutes. So I'm going to finish off to say that I believe in you. I'm super pumped that you're still here. If you're listening to this at the very end, if you're on YouTube watching and you've hung in there, thank you very much for doing that. Um, I really appreciate you. And do you know what? I am uh, hoping that you will feel the same way once you invest some time and additional energies into just learning something uh, that's going to only benefit you and your business and your well-being because my well-being certainly uh, improved since I did uh, the conference. It's uh, made me feel awesome. So until next time, my dear, I will love and leave you and um, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.